Hello, my friends, and welcome to video four of the Life of Awesome Change series. This video is about changing that all important money mindset so that you can attract and accept more money into your life. But first, a couple of quick housekeeping things to get taken care of. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. It really helps get the word out so that we can help more people create a life of awesome. And secondly, if you haven't watched the previous videos yet, please stop this video and go back and do that now. Each video builds upon the previous one and that'll really help you make those small changes and create that life of awesome that you are so desiring. I'll make sure to link the videos down below so that you can easily find them. All right, my friends, we are up to video number four, and I am sure that this has been the most anticipated video in the entire series. We are going to talk about that all-important money mindset so that we can attract and accept more money into our life. Now, as we know, money is an absolute necessity in our society and always has been. You know, even dating back to the cavemen, they would exchange things for, you know, goods or services, maybe rocks for, you know, some tree bark or, or whatever they would do. And then it kind of escalated into a bartering system of, I'll give you three chickens for a bale of hay or however it works. And then eventually, you know, coins and dollar bills came into the picture so that we could purchase goods and services and receive money in return for the goods and services that we provide. Now, the only time in our lives that money really has absolutely no value is when we're really, really small, up to the age of about four or five. Now, during those first early years, the money, the coins, the paper bills, you know, it's just something fun to look at, something to play with. I have a two-year-old niece and, you know, every once in a while she'll wander into my room and, you know, I'll throw change in my drawer, or, you know, I have a dollar bill or whatever lying around and she'll pick it up and she'll look at it and she'll, you know, think it's something fun to play with, but it really has absolutely no, and no value to it, to her, except, except something to use her imagination with. You know, she doesn't understand the concept of going out and buying things or being paid for a service. And it's really kind of interesting to watch her because, you know, being a 38-year-old man, my mentality about money is completely different and I value it, um, you know, a lot. <laughs> Funny story, when I was really little, I have a twin sister and, you know, we were probably around two, three, maybe four years old. I took um, a hundred dollar bill from my father. I must have been rummaging through, you know, his wallet or whatever. And I took a hundred dollar bill, my sister and I, we went into the bathroom and we flushed that hundred dollar bill down the toilet. My dad was so mad because, you know, that was the early eighties and, you know, a hundred dollars was a lot of money back then. And even today, you know, a hundred dollars is a, is a pretty significant amount of money. Now, while we're children and that money has no real value to us, we are observing what our parents do with it and how they react to money. Now, I'd like you to take a moment and think back to when you were really little and how your parents talked about money. I don't know about you, but money wasn't really talked a lot about in our house. You know, I knew my dad went to work and, you know, he got a salary and that helped pay the bills and I understood that concept. But I never knew how much he was paid. I never knew how much the bills were. I never knew what the mortgage was or the car payment or the insurance or everything else that goes into, you know, taking your money away. Um, I never knew any part of that. Now, as I got older, we started doing chores and were compensated with money. You know, we would get a certain amount for doing the dishes. We would get a certain amount for taking out the trash and vacuuming and sweeping and all the little things around the house that need to be, be taken care of. And, you know, we had a chart with the actual chores on it and then the designated amount. And then we would, there's four of us in the family and we would all kind of rotate 
you know, based on what that schedule was. And we, at the end of the week, my mom would um, calculate up exactly what we did. If we did it wrong, then we got docked pay. If we did it right, then we would get uh, an appropriate amount. And, you know, we were allowed to do whatever we wanted with that money. But other than that, it really wasn't talked about unless my dad was talking negatively about it. That's what I really remember from growing up um, uh, around the money aspect of things. You know, my dad would always say things like, oh, money doesn't grow on trees. Or, you know, you gotta kiss that frog in order to break the curse. Or the rich get richer. The only way you're gonna make it is if you step on someone else's back. Maybe we could go on that trip when we win the lottery. And I continued to hear those things until I moved out of the house. And, you know, I can't blame him. That's probably what his family taught him. And, you know, that's just what his mentality was. And that's what he passed down to me. Now, remember, the human brain doesn't stop developing until age 25. So everything that your parents were telling you or the way that they would react to something is continuously being engraved in you until about 25. That's when, you know, the human brain is at its fullest developed and you're, I guess, officially able to psychologically make effective decisions for yourself. But those traits and characteristics that you learned are kind of passed down. I am living with my sister right now and, you know, I hear some of those, thi those money things that my dad used to say. Money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, we can't afford this. Oh, maybe when we win the lottery. You know, and it's not her fault. It's not my fault. But we have the opportunity to change that. Now think about this. A recent survey discovered that as many as 59% of Americans claim to be living paycheck to paycheck. And yet 40% of America's wealth is controlled by only 1% of the population. That's pretty mind-blowing when you think of all the wealth that America has. And we are one of the richest countries in the world. 40% of that is controlled by 1% of the population. It's staggering. But does it do any good to be jealous? Does it do any good to get pissed off at them? Probably not. They might know something that we don't. And it has a lot to do with the way that they value and think about money. It has a lot to do with their money mindset. Now it's a fact. A majority of Americans have a negative mindset when it comes to money. Think about it. Do you frivolously spend money? I know when I was in college, you know, I was taking out student loans and uh, in the middle of the semester, I would get a refund check um, for the difference of what my classes and books cost compared to what I actually took out. And this refund check was generally between three and $5,000. Now, my dad always used to say, that money's gonna burn a hole in your pocket. And boy, was he right. It didn't matter if I had a nickel in my pocket, I had to get out and spend it. I couldn't let that, that nickel sit in my pocket or actually put, put it to good use. It had to go to something. And then, when I get a check for three to five thousand dollars, shabam! I was the king of the world. I tell you what, my fraternity brothers absolutely loved me, especially around the refund check time. Because we would go out to the bars, I'd be buying rounds, I'd be buying shots, I'd be buying anything I could just to spend that $5,000. It was insanity. I was absolutely crazy. And I got, I've always had that mindset about money. So when you actually take a step back and look at that mentality, what does that actually say about me? And maybe you can relate. I bring money in and then I immediately have to get rid of it. It could mean that I'm actually trying to push it away for whatever reason. Maybe I feel like I don't deserve it or, you know, I'm not worthy of receiving that benefit. 
And so I immediately have to get it out of my life. But if you think about it mentally, when, I, when you receive something and you try and push it away, that actually means that you don't want it. I know it sounds strange. I don't want money. Who doesn't want money? Everyone wants money. Everyone wants more money. All the time I hear people say, gosh, I wish I, I had more money. I could only do this if I had more money. Oh, I could only go on this vacation if I had more money. And yet, when I receive it, I immediately want to get rid of it. Isn't that kind of a contradiction? It really, really is. So maybe you can relate. Think about it. When was the last time that you actually received a, a sum of money that you weren't expecting? Let's say you got a holiday bonus from, uh, from your work and it was a couple hundred dollars. What did you do with it? Where did that money go? Did you spend it frivolously on some extra Christmas presents? Did you go out for a, you know, a grand meal? Did you go buy an, an, a, a couple of pairs of Jimmy Choo's? I guess for $300, you could probably only get one pair of Jimmy Choo's. But no matter, what did you do with it? Did you go out and blow it? Did you let it burn a hole in your pocket? Or did you actually accept that money and put it to good use so that it could actually work for you? putting it in some stocks or bonds or a retirement fund? Did you pay off some debts so you weren't paying such high interest rates? Did you use it to benefit you in the long run? Or did you, you, or did you blow it on something that would bring you joy right now? Now on the flip side of wanting to get rid of money by blowing it on absolutely nothing but crap, there's the mentality of hoarding it, you know? And I go through this as well. Each time I get paid, you know, I wanna hold on to that money. I don't wanna get rid of any of it. You know, I turn into Gollum, my precious. And then the bills come in. I'm like, no, you can't have my money. And I wanna hang on to it as long as I can, you know? But what is this mentality? This mentality actually speaks to the fact that you're afraid that you won't get any more of it. And so you wanna hang on to it for as long as you can. You know, you wanna hold that check in your hand so, and let absolutely no one or nothing uh, get a hold of it. And trust me, I understand. When the bills start rolling in, I don't want to pay them. There is no way I want to pay those stupid bills. But the people who you owe money to, the companies that you owe money to, have provided a service to you. And so think about the mentality there. When you go to a job and you actually provide a service to them, don't you expect to get paid for that service, for those goods? Don't you expect to get a paycheck every two weeks or you know, a stream of income for the services that you provide? So why wouldn't you want to give money to those who provide services for you? It's a mentality thing. And holding on to that paycheck, like you're never gonna get one again, actually tells the universe, I don't want any more. I'm afraid of it because someone's gonna come and take it from me. Pretty mind blowing, right? That's pretty intense when you actually sit down to think about it. And the world works like that in so many other facets. If you struggle to hang on to something, then nothing else good will come into your life because you're afraid that it'll be taken away. If something good comes in your life and you push it away, then nothing else good is gonna come into your life because you don't want it. Those mentalities are a contradiction to what we're actually saying. I want more money. I wanna be financially free. I wanna be debt free. I wanna be able to go on vacations. I wanna be able to support my family and put good dinners on the table and treat them to a good life. But I don't wanna keep any money or I wanna keep all my money. 
it's crazy and it's such a contradiction. And until we can get into that mindset of money comes in, money goes out, it freely flows in and out of my life like water, then we'll never progress in that financial factor of our lives. So for this video, I'd like you to take a look at your financial words. What words do you use when you talk about money? Are you afraid when the bills come in because then you have to get rid of your money? Do you say things like, oh, money doesn't grow on trees, or I can't afford that vacation, or, you know, there's no way I'll ever be able to do such and such. This is negative thinking. And as long as we stay in this negative thinking, this negative financial thinking, then we'll never grow and prosper into creating the life of awesome that we want. So here's the challenge. So here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to grab a clear mason jar or some other clear container. Put it up on your dresser or your nightstand, somewhere that's clearly visible every single day. And I would like you to uh, take a catalog of every time you have a negative thought about money. Are you flipping through a magazine and you see a dress that you like, or you know, uh, a jacket that you like, some shoes that you like, a vacation that, that intrigues you? And the immediate thought in your head is, ugh, I'll never be able to afford that. I want you to drop a coin into the container. And I want you to do this for 30 days. And what this will do is it'll help you become more conscientious of the thoughts that you actually have about money. As you see those coins grow, it becomes actually kind of exciting because A, you're becoming more conscientious and you can start changing that language, changing that thought pattern but you're also contributing to a fund that can bring you some sort of happiness that is awarded by financial success. And then from there, you can actually start the ball rolling on a much larger scale to achieve those bigger goals and those bigger ambitions that you have financially. All right, my friends, that will wrap it up for this video, this money mindset video. I really, really hope you got value out of it. If you did, please comment down below. I would love to know how this challenge affected you, what you got out of the challenge, how your money mindset has changed. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell when you subscribe so you get notified each time I create a video. And give me a big old thumbs up. This will all help us get the word out to more people so that they too can create a life of awesome. Have a fantastic day, my friends. Video five will be up next week and that will seal the deal on this series. Thanks again.